uh, will be streamed uh, later on. Uh, and uh, uh, invite all of you to keep uh, the uh, mic off and also uh, the uh, video camera uh, off. Uh, the, um, the idea of this Cosmos talk is to um, discuss, introduce the third edition of uh, Social Movements and Introduction that we brought with uh, Mario Diani. Uh, and from the University of Trento, and we invited Marco Giugni from the University of Geneva uh, to discuss uh, it with us. Uh, we will have it open as a Cosmos talk for the first part, and then uh, with the PhD students of the first year uh, uh, of the seminar on democratic theory, we will have uh, the occasion to, to discuss with Mario uh, in a more intimate environment. Uh, just we, um, I'm very glad to do this because I thought it could be uh, also a way to uh, reflect on the state of the art uh, in uh, research on social movement, contentious politics, political uh, participation, besides the fact of uh, meeting again uh, uh, friends like Mario and Marco, and to give uh, the the uh, students and the other colleagues at the school had the possibility to interact with them. Uh, we thought uh, to start with uh, uh, Mario Diani. Uh, I'll uh, then uh, um, address a few points that I think are uh, um, good points for discussion in our, in our uh, introductions and then give the floor to uh, Marco. Uh, and uh, Marco De Seri will be chairing, so that I don't abuse of my role. And just wanted to say this is a very long adventure with Mario. We were very young, very uh, poor, but very happy. <laughs> Nobody wanted to hire us uh, in uh, uh, any university. Uh, we were sort of uh, uh, the young mascot in a group of uh, scholars that started to uh, refound the fields. And it has been the beginning of uh, a long uh, collaborations and a, a tight uh, a friendship. Uh, it, uh, uh, it is not the only things that we have done together with Mario. We have written other books, articles, and uh, uh, what I think is more tied with uh, these uh, social movements and introduction is the uh, Oxford Handbook of Social Movement uh, Research. So I give the floor to uh, Mario. Hi. It looks like you put me out rather than, rather than then giving me the floor for some reason. Okay. Are we okay? Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, as you said, as Donatella said, uh, it's been a kind of a, a long uh, trip, and I'm not going to uh, reminisce at all about. Uh, about that, but uh, at the same time, it's clear that meeting like uh, uh, occasions like this one are uh, an opportunity to to reflect uh, or where we are uh, as, as a profession, as a as a line, as a community of people interested in, in doing a certain kind of research, and I think it can be done for for two different uh, uh, perspectives, at least. Thinking about, uh, at least, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do right now, and we'll be, say a few, uh, we'll offer a few comments about the book itself, uh, and then uh, uh, I will uh, try to talk a little bit about the community, the, let's say, the readership of the book, which uh, uh, in itself, uh, could be taken as a kind of a proxy for for the for, a, for the community of people that somehow 
uh, work uh, in this particular uh, field. Uh, now, there is a for, for some for some reason uh, this book uh, has become. <clears throat> I think we can fairly say that without sounding uh, excessively arrogant uh, or or self-promoting, it has become quite a reference point. It's often used. It's certainly, it's certainly cited pretty, pretty, pretty frequently. And uh, um, to the point that um, it's long been defined already, the second uh, edition of that uh, uh, secured the, the uh, label, was labeled uh, as, as a, a web at the authors of the book. So we were labeled as the guardians of the orthodoxy, the Laporte and Diani are the guardians of the orthodoxy. So it's a, that was, I think it was Kevin uh, MacDonald who said this in, in, in a book, which I find pretty, pretty funny, you know, uh, one level flattering if you want, but it is worth uh, thinking what this kind of orthodoxy is. So uh, it's pretty clear that the same, uh, despite the, the, the general impact uh, of, of the book, uh, uh, this is quite, uh, in many ways, uh, at the same time, it's a, it's a sort of a, of a, it's a niche community. In niche doesn't mean this, this case is small, but certainly it has to be said that uh, this is not a, a, I don't see, I don't see it as, as, as a book, as a treaty that uh, actually summarizes the field of social movement studies in general, if we by that we mean that, uh, uh, they, they overall the totality of people who have an interest in move, movements, as we as you know perfectly well. It's a kind, it's a very, very broad concept. It's a concept that goes from uh, co can cover immense, uh, immensely huge processes and very small campaigns. They've been used very inter and and it, refer, it has to be said that there is a, there is a, there are many traditions in in social science uh, and in social theory or in general that have dealt with the idea. So what are the, I think, the, the elements that are, that are distinctive, at least from my perspective, in this particular uh, subsection of the field, in this particular niche, that, which is also reflected in this book? First, it's, a, a, I would say, a, an aspiration to conduct, I would say, theoretically informed empirical research. Namely, these are the, this is a particular version of social movement study that tries to abstain, and I would, I would have to say quite successfully, has managed to abstain from the, simply from the commentary about political affairs. And, and, and it has tried to, to link in the best systematic way as possible uh, theory and research and produce a system of knowledge and that. The extent to which uh, we have been successful is not for us to, to, to assess in the first place. I mean, but I, I, would, have, I would have to say we, we've, been reasonable, we've done reasonably well. We could have done better, but we, I would say we've done reasonably well. The second element, which is more controversial, I would say, has been a particular, a part to try to, try to uh, achieve a particular balance between um, the, uh, what we would might call a scientific approach and what we would call, uh, I, I would call, a basically a militant approach. And here, it, it's, a, it's a, the, clearly the boundaries between these two fields are, are, are not necessarily clear, they are clearly defined, uh, we know perfectly well this is a controversy. It goes back very, 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 very long time in, in the history of the social sciences. I mean, we know that we know that uh, value-free knowledge uh, is not a, is an ideal. It is very, very, very far from being achieved, uh, provided that it is desirable. But nevertheless, I think there is an element uh, still which characterizes certainly my approach, and I suppose the approach of many in this particular community that we are committed to variable, uh, at least this for me, to scientific knowledge and and not not from a militant, strictly militant perspective, regardless of what we do in our in our public uh, activities, public lives. The third element, uh, I think, this is a this is a conversation which is 
uh, for which uh, the boundaries, the territorial boundaries need to be acknowledged. Uh, this is being primarily a Western based uh, conversation. I'm not, I'm not by, by no means, by, I don't think that because uh, that concept cannot travel, concepts can travel in my view, especially if you use analytically, not, not a description of, of, of specific realities. But it has to be. A, we we made an effort. We made an effort, a substantive effort in, in the in the Oxford handbook with Donatella to expand the conversation to bringing other perspectives. I think we have achieved something. I would say honestly, we can we, we can still do a lot. And I'm not saying that it's not only a Western conversation. There are many scholars in other in other parts of the world that use this concept, use these categories, but. And I, I don't, and I don't say, say this in an apologetic way. I don't think there is no need to apologize for that. Uh, uh, but it has to be uh, at the same time recognize, important to recognize the boundaries of the exercise. Second, <laughs> this is the third. Uh, so this is the kind of first uh, thing I would say about the book. It's not a book that claims. It's a book uh, that uh, offers some line of presents some line of some some rather design conversations. We think these lines of conversation are important. There is no claim. I, I would say that these are the only possible lines of conversation, or not even the, the, the most frequent ones you can find uh, out there in the public uh, arena about the social movement. Second, it also the the, the book was also also always labeled as uh, well, title social movements under title and introduction. And I remember the first edition we were pretty unhappy, if I remember correctly, uh, about the subtitle and introduction we thought was more kind of a synthesis and uh, we thought this was a bit diminishing uh, in a sort of way and, and uh, but but the, okay, okay, if anything the the, the 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 subtitle now it works better than it is more realistic than than what was 20 years ago and uh, in in uh, in writing his prize for praise for praise for the for the first edition Chuck Tilly said Emphasize very much. We were sort of uh, offering a, a synthesis, a, a conversation, integrational perspective between the so-called American and the so-called European approach. Okay, those are labels as well, whatever they mean. But uh, we were bringing together in trying to bring together uh, different types of literature that uh, in the late 1990s uh, were already engaged in conversation, but certainly. They didn't have, uh, uh, if you want, if you want, a uh, uh, systematic uh, or sort of quasi-systematic uh, treatment, and uh, there was no comparable attempt to to, to put bring them together in in a in a kind of a larger, if loose uh, framework. And with time, this is a, this has a, a, a changed. Uh, this changed uh, obviously because the community has grown, and also there are. Uh, the first, uh, the, 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 real, the the sheer amount of the intellectual uh, production of social movements has gone up immensely. It would be impossible, literally impossible now, to summarize uh, uh, in a systematic way what has been written in the last decades about that. There, is, there, are, there are a number of, uh, of uh, handbooks uh, and, uh, and, uh, of, and companions which have been produced. So the, the, there is really no need, no, there is not even the, the, the need for that uh, anymore, I, I would have to say. So in, in that sense, uh, the book is now, we say, much more of, of an introduction, really. In the, in the sense, the subtitles is more low, is a better reflection of what is in the book now than it was 20 years ago. So this is a clear sign of, of strength. And uh, I, I think that also reflects the fact that certainly in my chapter, I, I was, I, the chapter that I, I, I revised about uh, the role of identity, the cultural representation frames, uh, and uh, networks and individual participation, I found the impression was that uh, uh, we are really entered a, a level of normal science, not in the sense that there is a consolidated paradigm, but in the sense that there is a, there are some, some underlying ideas which have been by and large largely incorporated and then now we are into into a process of endless uh, specification and qualification and articulation maybe because i'm getting older the tendency to to say there is nothing new is increasingly and i apologize to those who are trying hard to 
to go beyond the, no, the normal science level, but I, I had the impression that he was a bit uh, at that sort. Uh, in what I think, uh, and there have been excellent, uh, you think also, for, the, for example, on the, on the issue social, regarding the role of social networks in facilitating individual participation, there are some excellent recent work, for example, the book by Passi and uh, Monsch that bring us uh, new elements, but they are yet again there. The, 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 I would say that the, the peak, uh, the, the capping of a, of a long uh, experience or a long travel for themselves as well in terms of engagement with the topic rather than radically a new departure. What I, what I thought in that regard that an area in which I think there is more more, more work to do is rather the, 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 you know, the shift in, in the chapter from organizations to organizing the idea and even more, making more explicit the idea that there, are, I mean, there is a multiplicity of forms in, in which collective action is coordinating. Uh, my, my concept of modal coordination tries to precisely to capture the, the, that, that plurality. And, uh, and I think that is a way which is, uh, is, what is one of the main challenges that we face right now, especially, obviously, in the light of the emergence uh, of internet um, computer mediated forms of communication that is uh, certainly alter the way we, we people coordinate the extent and the, the, the exact patterns in which this happens are still largely to be not explored because they have been there being explored of course what I, I would fairly say there is not a consent quite a, a sufficient consensus on what uh, is uh, distinct uh, what what is new what, what is uh, traditional uh, what is a uh, reflects continuity. But I think that that's clearly an area in which uh, more work is to do. But honestly, all in all, I would say that, that, that the position of the book is clearly changed precisely because the field has consolidated. And uh, and uh, I take uh, Walter is not hearing me well. I will try to, I can try to speak closer to my, my small micro. Um, Anyway, uh, that's the first. Uh, uh, so I would say in the, the book is a is very much a reflection. Is a is a reflection of uh, what uh, uh, the way that the field has evolved. On the other hand, uh, I don't know. Five more minutes. Can I have five more minutes to chair? Yes, I think probably. Okay. Uh, what, what what is the what is the essay? Uh, what is the main community uh, for this book? Clearly, the, the field itself, even the academic field of social movement studies, is quite uh, is internally uh, still uh, fragmented along two main lines. Uh, traditionally, it was the, the divide between the, the, the so called uh, RC 47 and 48, and there was the, the two different research committees of the International Sociological Association that. Uh, the one was, let's say, closer to the um, American-European conversation, and we, the one to which we are conventionally associated, and uh, the other one originally mo mostly inspired by Turin's uh, legacy, and uh, which now includes uh, people like Jehoa Player and uh, all the all the people working around the the, the online journal interface, and uh, and uh, which are. Uh, which is a quite a different, quite a different angle. I think. Uh, so what what defines our our particular community is not a, not a, it's not it's not a matter of individual uh, loyalty to, to to some people or, or just personal connection. In that regard, in that regard, I think there are there are still elements of, of continuity. In, in in that regard, I think there is a that. Uh, the the core themes of, of, of the of the book are still distinctive of our particular branch of social movement uh, analysis. Namely, uh, the book, as you know, is uh, fundamentally centered around uh, four big, big themes. Uh, one, broadly speaking, the structure, the the, the the structural basis of collective action and the, and the structural changes that may generate new forms of collective, bring uh, facilitate the pot, create the potential for new forms of collective action. 
that brought uh, around the, another team processes of social construction of issues and motivations to act. The third one is the relationship between resources and the organizational resources in particular, forms of organizing and the dilemma of collective action. And the fourth topic is the, the, the relationship between collective act actors and their environment, and in particular, obviously, but not, not only the political environment. Now, uh, there is a, uh, I would have to say that this defines, largely speaking, our uh, a, a community of people who share. But the, the, the interesting thing, the, the issue that I've been gripped playing with for, for a long time uh, has been, uh, is, this really, is this really social movement analysis? What I'm saying, uh, is, the, is the, 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 the general labor social movement more of a straight jacket or, or a, actually a condensing symbol that helps people to recognize with each other? Now, there is no doubt that many of the processes, that all the processes that I mentioned are very often acted upon by, uh, by large scale movements. That there is no doubt about that. But at the same time, there is also a more contingent fact, namely the fact that these, these questions as such are shared, are also common to other fields. And we are, in, actually, one of the, the work which has been done in the last years has been precisely and the work to launch bridges to, to get somehow out of the strictly speak, strictly defined social movement community and to uh, expand into, uh, into areas which are already open and interested to the themes, maybe not to the, to the word, to the concept in the way we use it, but to the team that we address. For example, uh, next, uh, next July, Donatella and I are co-chairing a, a panel, a series of panel stream at uh, the European uh, Group of Organizational Studies, EGOS. Precisely, and, and uh, this is just one example which I mentioned because in which I am involved uh, and uh, which emphasizes the importance of launching these bridges. I think, I think uh, at this point, uh, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to uh, propose to dissolve the field as such because we still a, we're still a community which is, a or, or which is defined by cooperations and conversation, but I, I really think that. Uh, there is uh, an underlying problem there. I think I think that we are we are uh, being very good in addressing teams issues that other fields of social science have not addressed in, in uh, with the same uh, depth. I would have to say with the same uh, to which other fields of social science haven't paid perhaps the same attention. But I also think that now uh, there is a, a problem of locating, uh, relocating again, reassessing the centrality of these particular lines, this, this particular line of inquiry in relation to other larger fields in the social science. Because, I mean, I mean uh, it's paradox. I think we are, we are big enough and strong enough and numerous enough uh, to be able to promote our own agendas with variable degrees of success, especially in the, certainly in the Italian concourse we are enjoying a variable level of success, so there are issues of, there as well of consolidation of, and the, of the field. Uh, but generally speaking, we are, sorry for the domestic reference, but generally speaking, I think we are, we are strong enough, and it is creates a paradox, because uh, when, when you're big enough to be self-contained, that is also uh, increases uh, risks of uh, becoming self-referential. And uh, we tried to tackle that five years ago with the Oxford Handbook. As I said, I think we did a decent job. I think there is a lot, a lot uh, to do in that direction. And uh, perhaps one possibility will be, I don't know, the next time I, I we, we might be asked to, to rewrite uh, this book. I doubt this will happen, but probably COVID-19 will take me out of the uh, out of action before that. But uh, I, I, would, I think I would uh, make a case for suggesting to, that we uh, speak of uh, collective action rather than social movement. I already tried that when, when we were talking about the Oxford Handbook, Donatella, in their way, as usual. 
and that's always tied to, to social movement. But I think there is an issue there, which is not purely nominalistic, but which also defines and, and uh, affects the way in which uh, we uh, locate our work in relation to other professional communities. And I think uh, that's one of the next steps for our field. Thanks for your passions. Thank you, Mario. And uh, already there is some advancement because the last time we talked about this, Mario said I would never write a fourth edition. Now it seems uh, he's changing his mind uh, out of boredom with other things, maybe. But I wanted to start when uh, where he ended uh, because I think that indeed we have to define what social movement studies is. Uh, it is a topic. Uh, uh, that has been addressed more and more uh, by different disciplines, but also by different sub-disciplines. So, in the very beginning, it was maybe just uh, uh, political sociology uh, and uh, uh, comparative politics uh, that were more interested in the field, to the point that it was said that uh, social movement had substituted social classes as a main core uh, uh, topic in political sociology. But nowadays we see also when we organize conferences at uh, Cosmos or we go to conferences that social movements uh, have, have been addressed and in different ways than uh, we address them uh, in economic sociology through studies of the labor movements, in uh, sociology of education, through research uh, on the student movements in uh, historical sociology, in many branches within sociology and political science. And for in each of these branches, uh, there have been some dominant uh, uh, theories, approaches, debates. Uh, uh, we tried to uh, become aware of when we uh, uh, revised this book and when we especially uh, edited the Oxford Handbook but it is huge and it is uh, something that we have to um, learn, translate uh, and interact with uh, in each of the new movements that we address. For instance, now we are studying uh, a lot new generations in uh, uh, social movements and we interact with uh, sociology of the youth. It is uh, still another uh, type of uh, uh, um, sub-disciplines uh, media is another one. So I think that when we think about social movement studies, sometimes we conceptualize them into different ways. One is all uh, what is said about social movements, so more related with the subject. Uh, and another one is uh, uh, how a certain type of approach to social movements, the orthodox, as Mario uh, mentioned, approach, developed and how it is transformed and uh, contaminated, cross-fertilized with the other um, a, a type of uh, um, thinking uh, approaches in other disciplines. And uh, in fact, uh, it is also an uh, uh, issue that is interesting to reflect upon to which extent uh, uh, the type of approaches that have developed in social movement studies uh, uh, are really um, highly theoretically oriented. So I think that uh, when I started to work on social movements, I wasn't considering social movements as a field in which there were strong theories, not like social stratification, for instance, or not even uh, uh, in uh, uh, electoral behaviors. Uh, it was uh, by nature more uh, um, eclectic, it has developed by including uh, uh, different scholars in the small groups that uh, Mario and I, uh, and then also Marco, frequented when we were the youngsters. Uh, and uh, uh, it was formed by bridging or by um, putting in the same room, I would say, uh, scholars like Alberto Melucci were reflecting more on uh, uh, big sociological uh, transformations. Uh, scholars uh, uh, like Sidney Taro or Hans-Peter Crisis or Dieter Rucht, 
that were more reflecting on uh, comparative political uh, uh, issues. Uh, uh, scholars uh, of organizations like uh, um, uh, John McCarthy and Mayo Zold and uh, the uh, micro sociologist uh, uh, Gamson uh, uh, with a certain type of approach, uh, uh, David Snow uh, with uh, uh, a more um, um, uh, symbolic constructivist type of approaches. What we wanted to do with Mariols in the beginning. Uh, uh, was not, I think, highly theoretical. Uh, it was uh, um, a sort of uh, a critical uh, uh, analysis of the literature done for the first ed edition in a period in which you could say, I read everything that has been written on social movements, uh, and I try to summarize uh, it bridging already with some other type of uh, 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 topics, uh, as you could see also in, in the first editions. But uh, in general, uh, um, I didn't have the perceptions of a uh, big uh, theoretical uh, strike, uh, fight uh, in the field. Uh, and, uh, and I was a bit surprised when, uh, pleasantly surprised, when social movement studies started to be um, looked at in other uh, fields as uh, a, uh, an area of studies from which you could draw uh, theoretical insight. In area studies, this happened when uh, there were attempts to use social movement studies uh, uh, to analyze uh, uh, social movements uh, uh, in um, uh, other areas than the Western areas in which they have developed, uh, but also, for instance, industrial relations, is a, an area in which social movement studies have been considered as more theoretically oriented than, uh, uh, than, uh, than this uh, type of uh, areas. So what we uh, started to do with that book uh, was reflecting on social movement studies in and within democracy, I totally agree with uh, Mario, it is a very specific, uh, uh, selective uh, type of uh, uh, approach. But I think we tried to do it uh, with a lot of uh, lateral thinking. So uh, Mario always had a strong interest in organizations. Uh, I was working also on issues like political violence, political corruption, uh, so uh, we we were were different in our approach, a sociologist and a political scientist, and uh, the aim was not to build our own theories, like for instance, uh, uh, Doug McAdam, Sidney Taro, uh, and Charles Tilly have done with contentious politics, uh, uh, but rather to um, uh, put different traditions. Uh, uh, in uh, dialogue with each other. And in fact, I think at the origins of this book, there was Mario's uh, article, uh, a definition, uh, conceptual definitions of social movements that became uh, path-breaking uh, uh, um, contributions. Uh, and that was based on uh, uh, this type of approach, not choosing uh, one uh, uh, single definitions, but trying to find this sort of uh, minimal common, common denominators, which made sense uh, uh, within uh, uh, some theoretical uh, reflections. So this, I think, was at the beginning, opening up, bridging, uh, bridging the uh, American and European tradition. Uh, none of us was particularly American, uh, and uh, but also not particularly close to, to uh, other type of uh, uh, traditions. So this is what we tried to do. And in um, the uh, Oxford Handbook, we consciously try to expand this by thinking uh, about uh, how uh, social movements were reflected upon in, our, uh, in other disciplines, in geography, uh, in political theory, in psychology, uh, in philosophy, uh, and so on. And, and in fact, we, I think, uh, when we assessed the 
uh, chapters that we received by the different uh, uh, contributors. We also used uh, the terms of good vintage uh, articles for some that were within uh, the orthodox traditions that were interesting but not so innovative and others instead that uh, gave us a possibility to uh, interact with these other uh, perspectives. Uh, I want to say something about the changes between the different editions because I think that this is also uh, sort of interesting from the point of view of sociology of knowledge. Uh, the way in which we had constructed each chapter uh, after the introduction, uh, the introductory chapters, was to uh, choose uh, a movement as illustration for each chapter. Uh, and in the first edition, they were mainly new social movements, movement and so on. For each chapter, it changed, but it remained uh, related with the uh, uh, those that were important at the moment. Uh, in the second edition, it was the global justice movement uh, that, uh, in its different uh, uh, type of uh, characteristics, and in the third one, the anti-austerity, and as Mario said, in the fourth one, it would be the anti-COVID protest, uh, uh, maybe or maybe others. Uh, but it was not only that we changed movements, I think we changed a bit also the way in which we looked at them. Uh, we added topics, for instance, uh, in the second edition, transnationalization uh, was one of the reflections that we introduced in all the chapters. Uh, in the third one, um, structural transformations in capitalism, uh, is one of the things that we added because uh, uh, we were following uh, uh, also the type of uh, topic that seemed more relevant uh, in, uh, in the, uh, the development of these movements. New media, of course, became also uh, important. But the um, argument I want to make today is also that uh, besides these different uh, illustrations, and uh, the different uh, topic that we introduced, so theoretical concepts, there was also a sort of um, change in the uh, approach that reflected uh, changes in the way uh, in which uh, uh, social movements uh, uh, emerged in those specific uh, times. What I mean is that uh, uh, the time of our first edition was the time in which we thought social movements is normal politics. Uh, so it was uh, movements that were rather consensual, uh, uh, that uh, uh, were not really single issues, tended to combine different issues, but were uh, more um, specifically uh, addressing uh, uh, different topics. Uh, it was not the big ideologies. And in fact, I don't think that in the book we talk about ideology at all. These uh, uh, visions, I think, changed with the other editions, at least for me. Uh, and uh, I think that this also changed a bit the general approach. So uh, initially, uh, and a bit also in the second editions, we were thinking in terms of uh, precondition and outcome, independent variables and uh, uh, dependent variables in which the preconditions were uh, uh, political opportunities, uh, uh, um, mobilizing structures uh, may be mediated through uh, by framing, uh, and then protest was the uh, outcome. I think that especially in the last edition, what we tried to uh, introduce in several chapters at least, uh, is also the opposite idea. That is one that I think um, has a, a relevant impact not only uh, in reflections on social movements but also beyond. And it is uh, the idea of uh, considering more the agency capacity and uh, uh, to a certain uh, uh, related with this also the relation, the role of relations rather than conditions in, uh, in the development of uh, 
the uh, uh, object we wanted to study. So the idea that protest uh, is changing the context, that protest is not just the dependent variables that you have to uh, explain by counting the numbers of events or the effects uh, of uh, uh, these actions, but that uh, it can uh, uh, produce relevant changes. And uh, I think I have uh, five minutes left. Uh, what I think is that uh, this uh, approach uh, to protest in social movements as eventful uh, is particularly relevant, not by chance it emerged in our times, because it is a moment in which anti-austerity protest, but also later on the long autumn of 2019, so protests that were massive, uh, that happened in moment of low opportunities and of uh, um, lack of uh, sort of uh, traditional uh, resources, uh, that were innovative in the forms, in the actions, and in the uh, uh, framing, uh, and also that to a certain extent they were effective in the uh, um, short or in the long term. Uh, and uh, this is um, what we uh, try to capture, especially in the chapter on repertoires of actions, but also in, in, uh, uh, in chapter two on uh, the um, contextual conditions, is the fact that uh, social movements, uh, uh, especially in intense time, uh, tend to be momentous actors. It is an idea that I tried to develop in an article recently published in uh, Social Movement Studies, uh, in which I uh, try to bridge uh, reflections in social movements uh, with reflections uh, in other disciplines, uh, like uh, uh, all those that have been affected by new institutional approach, and especially by the critical junctures type of approach. Um, by the reflections on the uh, eventful time that uh, uh, Bill Sewell has introduced uh, in uh, the analysis of social movements, by the idea of eventful protest as uh, something that is characterized by a quite, quite fast spread uh, of quite radical demands for ruptures, upscaling quickly. Uh, we, we had uh, last week the uh, roundtable on Chile, there it emerged uh, also movements that started with uh, a small uh, 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 claim uh, about the cost of the public transports and escalated into a constitutional moment. So I think this is something that uh, when we um, thought about movement as uh, normal politics, uh, uh, could have overlooked. And so also the reflections on the emo emotional uh, turn, the cognitive turn and the relational turn could be related with these uh, reflections on mechanisms through which agency transforms uh, uh, structures. How linked to democracy? Uh, I think usually traditional explanations based on uh, of democratizations, democratic quality, democratic uh, uh, development, and democratic deepening tend to consider uh, uh, structural conditions or cultural conditions. So traditionally, uh, it has been analysis that stress the fact that in order to have uh, democracy, you needed some uh, level of economic develop, income, and so on, uh, or cultural explanations that said that in order to have democracy, you needed pre-existing civil cultures, uh, with some uh, analysis that addressed some mechanism uh, uh, between uh, uh, this macro and other ma um, macro causes and macro effects in terms of mechanisms such as education, expectations, class transformations, uh, and so on. So these were type of approaches in which time to go back to Sewell was used either in a teleological or in an experimental form. So either 
expecting that modernizations would bring about democratization processes and so that it was a sort of process uh, uh, any country will, would uh, uh, go through. And another one uh, uh, more, that Sewell called more experimental in the sense of comparing like uh, in uh, Rainer Bendix uh, or uh, uh, Barrington Moore, uh, the uh, uh, type of characteristics in some countries uh, that uh, produce democracy um, in, the, in, uh, uh, in some countries selectively, let's say. I think that uh, uh, looking in this perspective, in the perspective of eventfulness, instead allows to see discontinuities in democratic processes, and in fact, it dovetail, uh, it um, uh, re resonate uh, with transitional approach, like uh, Guillermo Donnell or Philip Schmidt type of approach that looked at transitions as phenomena that are open-ended, that uh, imply um, radical type of change rather than increment incremental change. Uh, and that are sudden in times. Difference is that uh, Philip Schmidt and Guillermo Donnell considered especially the elite uh, uh, as uh, main actors of these transitions and considered especially pact, uh, pacted transitions as the good uh, uh, recipe for stable democracy. Uh, while uh, uh, what social movement studies introduce in this is the role of movements, not only organized, but also of, uh, masses, that we see active in the Chilean case nowadays, uh, or in Lebanon, or in Hong Kong. Plus, they introduce the idea that not necessarily violent, not necessarily the revolutions that Barrington Muret thought was necessary in order to get democracy, but moment of, uh, uh, of mobilization, massive mobilizations, are important in uh, uh, producing changes. And I think that intense time, like the ones we are uh, dealing with, are partic particularly uh, um, hospitable for this type of uh, um, transformations, uh, because the type of institutional assets uh, are no longer considered as working. So the path dependency, uh, type of mechanism are uh, no longer um, uh, acknowledged. And in terms of uh, uh, rationality at the individual or at the organizational level, changing times means also that uh, uh, no uh, reliable assessment can be done uh, of circumstances and in circumstances that are all, uh, always changing. So this says, uh, way of uh, introductions. I also thank you for uh, your patient and uh, give the floor to Marco Giugni, University of Geneva, uh, and one of uh, the um, main uh, scholars within the field of uh, social movement studies. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, hope you hear me uh, good enough. Okay, so um, what not easy to uh, talk about uh, these issues after uh, two of the most prominent uh, scholars in the world. Uh, also because actually uh, uh, I think you already raised some of the issues that I wanted to say. Um, but the good news is that my, my talk would link up very well with what you said and also with what you do in the in the book. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate for the third edition of the book, of course. Uh, I've been personally using this book, which I find the best, uh, the best, well, I was about to say introduction, but <laughs> now I don't know, but the, the, the best overview of, of, the, of the field uh, and, and different theories of social movement. So I've been using in my classes since I think now it's 20 years. I think the first edition was in 99, right? Or 97, even the Italian uh, version, as far as I remember uh, correctly. Um, so, congratulations, and, and also for the very nice cover. I have to say, this edition is a very nice cover. I don't know if it was the same for the second, which I didn't read, I have to confess. Um, 
Well, uh, what I wanted to say briefly, uh, I'm trying to uh, give you some reflections about the state of social movement studies and also uh, linking up to what, uh, to what you said. Uh, you both mentioned the uh, word uh, bridge or bridges. So bridging different aspects, different fields or subfields uh, and so on. Uh, and actually, uh, my 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 few points that I would like to 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 throw in um, talk also about bridges, but also about walls. Uh, now uh, you seem, especially Donatella, to be a little bit more optimistic than I am. Uh, I, I I I'm playing the pessimistic uh, view, uh, while acknowledging that there have been a lot of bridges uh, from you, but from many other scholars in the field in the last, let's say, 20 or even more years, uh, I think there are still some walls that are there that have characterized the field for a long time. I, I'd like to mention a few of them, uh, some of which are very obvious for you working in the field. Uh, the, probably the most obvious of, of all uh, is this classical distinction, distinction between what Tilly called breakdown and solidarity theories, or between grievances and discontent on one hand, and opportunity and resources on the other hand. Um, of course, we have gone uh, beyond that today, to some extent at least, but I, if I look at things published even today, I still find some 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 uh, aspects related to this this opposition because this was really a strong opposition with 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 some uh, theory bashing uh, reciprocal theory bashing at some point uh, to which I have to confess I I, I contributed myself uh, <laughs> you know which side I am or I was at least because I changed a little bit my mind on this side so I I I, I moved uh, more. Uh, along the grievance path than I, than I used to to be uh, like 20 years ago. So this is one, 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 uh, one distinction or one opposition, I would say, that have for long structured the field. So progress has been made, but I think, uh, and, and this progress, I have to say, have been made especially by, in my view at least, by some social psychologists. That I, I'm thinking of the work of, by Bert Klandermans, for example. I, I see his work at least as, as, as an attempt, actually uh, a successful attempt, to bridge these two, these two aspects. And maybe more broader, uh, linking up to what you said, I think, uh, is also this, this, this opposition or this distinction between the cultural and the structural. So the, the, the identities and, and, and all these things on one hand, culture, and on the other hand, the, the, the structures, the, 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 the political opportunities, structural elements. This has also been uh, uh, the object of, 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 of a divide, of a wall that you all remember or most of you, uh, I suppose, uh, remember the, this book. Uh, I think it was in 2004 or something by, by, by um, uh, Jeff Goodwin and, and James Jaspers, where there was this discussion about these two sort of paradigm or kinds of explanation, it was a criticism of political opportunity structure. Um, a second, a second uh, wall, in my view, is uh, something that has to do with the divide that I see still between institutional, electoral, party politics on one hand, and uh, uh, social movements, collective action, contentious politics on the other hand. I think this is still a strong divide. Again, there have been a lot of progress uh, done recently. I'm thinking about the work by Fabio Rojas and, and Michael Heaney, for example. I'm thinking about Sven Hutter and, and, and other colleagues and many others, actually. Uh, I myself tried. I'm uh, uh, slowly trying to go into this uh, uh, into this uh, uh, bridging between the two fields, uh, and I have to say, actually, although probably there is, I don't know if there is something working more on the electoral side here. Um, I think this effort to bridge these two aspects have been done more by us social movement scholars than by them, <laughs> by by elector people from the electoral side, which I think still totally ignore. Uh, what we do, what we produce, and and, and so on. Uh, a third, a third um, uh, divide is more between 
uh, or across uh, disciplines that I think it, it was mentioned. Uh, it's between uh, sociology and political science uh, on the other end. Uh, overlapping, there is also a, a, a cross-continental uh, divide there because, of course, in the United States, it's more sociologists. In, 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 in Europe, with some prominent exceptions, of course, I have to say, um, especially in presence of Mario, uh, it's more political scientists that have been studying social movements and, and these kinds of things. So, uh, and I was amazed actually, um, uh, Donatella mentioned also works in anthropology, geography, and I think we, um, both sociologists, political scientists studying social movements, have largely ignored actually these, these works that have been done, and probably there is something that we can draw uh, from or on um, from these uh, other approaches. Um, so this is a broader divide, I would say, not only in social movement studies. Uh, a fourth uh, related um, um, divide or wall, as I call it, is uh, between sub-disciplines or between research traditions. I think there have been a strong divide between, which is a, a little bit overlapping between the, with the one I, I mentioned previously between sociology and political science, but anyway, uh, it's between social movement studies on one hand and the, 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 the political science tradition of political participation. Now I'm referring to uh, the, the, the verba e al traditions and, and so on. I think these two fields have been tackling similar, uh, to some extent, similar aspects, especially when, 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 when uh, they were looking at protest, uh, protest participation from the at, at the individual level, but with very little dialogue uh, amongst the two. And um, so I think I think there is something uh, that should be done also to bridge this this kind of divide. And if I'm allowing myself a, a, a small self promotion, since you've mentioned in the Oxford Handbook of Social Movements, uh, I'd like to mention that with uh, my colleague and friend Maria Grasso, we are actually preparing the Oxford Handbook of Political Participation, which has to which some of you contribute, uh, uh, and uh, uh, where we are explicitly trying to bridge these two traditions, research traditions. And I think this is something important. For example, just to give you an example, I, I, I remember a, um, a very good, now old article by uh, Sarah Soul and, um, and uh, a co-author, which I forget the name, Schussmann. Um, uh, and, and, and if you read the, this article, it's about protest participation, what explains protest participation. And they actually take the verbe altri civic vol voluntaries model and they apply it. But uh, with, this is one exception, perhaps, of, of this, of this, this uh, um, wall that still exists, I think. Then I could also mention some, some methodological device. Um, that are s probably still around and to some extent, um, not only in our field, of course, in many others, it's the classical divide between quantitative and qualitative approaches. Um, again, I think there have been progress, but the progress I see is more on declarations than on actual research. I, s I read, I'm reading a lot of declarations about the fact that we must bridge uh, these two uh, methodological approaches, uh, that we should go towards a mixed method approach and so on. But then when we do research, we, we, we still uh, remain largely confined in our own uh, comfort zone, I would say, uh, including myself, of, of course. Um, uh, perhaps relating to this also and broadly, uh, there is also the macro-micro, Donatella has mentioned this, the macro-micro uh, uh, wall or divide again, um, there have been progress there as well, but still I think there is much more to do to combine the macro and the micro uh, um, uh, aspects or, or, or dimensions or, or levels. Uh, also methodological because, uh, because there have been a lot of progress in this, in this respect. So these are, in my view, and there are many other that one could mention, there are some of the walls that I think have characterized the field. Um, uh, so my question is, and perhaps it's for the discussion, I don't know, but uh, if what has been done, if, I mean, uh, first question is whether you agree with, with my, 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 my picture 
of the field. Uh, and the, the second question is whether we need to do more, or whether we need to do more uh, bridging uh, to go beyond this this device and to to, to break down this this uh, these walls. Um, Perhaps uh, one way to answer actually is to acknowledge or to recognize that I think this kind of bridging, and I'm giving an answer actually, uh, which is a positive one, uh, this kind of bridging I think is all the more needed today that we are living in a rapidly changing society. This connects very well with what uh, uh, Donatella said actually. Um, uh, so without mentioning globalization and so on. Um, there is also an aspect, I think, relating to the fact that I, I, maybe I'm too pessimistic, but it looks a little bit like we are living in a permanent status of crisis of all sorts, economic crisis. We, we come out of economic crisis, then we have a pandemic, then we have a, 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 a sanitary crisis, which reflects on uh, uh, another economic crisis as well. And it, it looks like these cycles of emerging crises, they're, they're becoming more and more increasing and, 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 and they sort of create a, a status of permanent crisis. So this, this calls, I think, for, for a change. Uh, and, and, and obviously, this also reflects on the fact that uh, popular contention is also transforming. Uh, as as Donatella as 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 as, um, as, as uh, uh, pointed out, um, and I think this 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 um, calls for for adaptation probably from from uh, social movement scholars. Sorry, I'm just checking the time. Um, I still have. Oh, I think I still have a few minutes, five or, or six. So I, I'd like to to link up. Uh, this with, with a few speculations about changes, some of which, uh, uh, again, are perhaps already mentioned by, by, by the other two uh, speakers. Um, I think there are four points that I'd like to mention. Some of them are well known by social movement scholars, or at least scholars of political participation. One is that I think we are uh, witnessing uh, sort of popping up of different kinds of movements uh, of different sorts, uh, addressing different issues. Uh, uh, now, uh, and I think also that this, these movements are uh, increasingly linked to each other in some way, which remains to be studied, for example. Um, I don't know if this is simple, the witnessing what, what, what Sitaro called the cycle of protest. Perhaps we are into another cycle of protest. Uh, or maybe it's more uh, the things that Donatella, if I understood correctly, have mentioned that this, this eventful uh, uh, thing that, that she mentioned that, that, that changes everything. So uh, this is one, one kind of transformation that I think it should be acknowledged better by social movement scholars. Uh, the other one is the, the uh, again, it's speculative, but I've been thinking about the blurring a divide between uh, participant uh, participants in in protest activities uh, i have the impression that uh, years ago was more clearly a division uh, between uh, leftist participants and leftist movements and rightist participants and movements whereas i think today we have social movements that that combine different uh, yeah, I, I could say different ideologies, different uh, value orientation by participants. So there, there, there is a blurring, I think, between uh, between left and right in movement participation. Let's put it that way. Uh, again, it's speculative, but I think I think there's something that could be uh, studied. Thirdly, I think there is a blurring of the divide between social and economic issues. Um, I think this is this probably started with the the, the, the global justice movement twenty years ago or even more, uh, and then continue with the uh, austerity, anti-austerity protests and movements, uh, and 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 perhaps it continues today. Actually, uh, I think today uh, there is what, what what in an article I made with Nina Eggert, um, 
we called homogenization of uh, participation in social movements. And again, this of course calls for different instruments of, of, of an adaptation of existing instrument to study these kinds of movements. Um, another is a fourth, which is well known actually by scholars of political participation. I think there is an increasing broader spectrum of citizens that become involved in protest as compared to years ago. This is what Pippa Norris and, and Stefan Valgrave and others call the normalization of protest, I think. And what uh, with Maria Grasso we call the pluralization of protest. Uh, so there are all these changes that, 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 that call for um, for uh, uh, an adaptation, I think, of the instrument, of the analytical instrument that we have uh, in our toolkit as, as social movement scholars or as, as sociologists or political scientists, if you prefer. Um, uh, so, and, and, and to conclude probably soon, uh, I think uh, that we have to acknowledge that there is an increasing interconnected, interconnectedness uh, of, of the world and of the movements also acting within this world, uh, which I think calls for a greater attention to diffusion. Of course, there are works on diffusion, uh, but I think they remain rather limited and I think they should become more central in the study of social movements. I think we should acknowledge that crises have perhaps become a permanent feature of society, as I said, uh, which calls for a re, um, uh, revamping of this uh, uh, articulation between grievances and opportunities, which I think uh, has been done recently and, and, and should be done uh, even more. Um, and I also think that we have to acknowledge the social movement, and this probably links up with what Mario said, are not a phenomenon sui generis, but are part and parcel of the society and they contribute to changing that society. So in that sense, I think we should uh, find a better link between the study of social movements or collective action, because I think I agree with Mario's conclusion actually in the end. So we, we should better link the study of movements or collective action with uh, uh, democracy or issues relating to uh, the development uh, of democracy in positive or in negative, of course, uh, because we have been witnessing and we are witnessing uh, negative turns uh, in, 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 in democracy uh, recently. Um, and um, yeah, maybe just to conclude uh, um, uh, in a more broader way, uh, one question that, 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 that based on what I said, I think one question that could be asked is uh, uh, to what extent we need a, what I could call a sort of change in paradigm. I don't know if what Donatella proposes is a change in the paradigm or something else uh, you will say, uh, but I wonder whether at, at this point, with all this transformation, with all these changes of configuration that I mentioned and many others, uh, the question that we can ask ourselves whether we need a, a, paradig a paradigmatic change in how we approach uh, social movements. Of course, as you know, there have been, I think, uh, at least an attempt of a paradigmatic change uh, like 20 years ago. I'm referring to this this whole uh, contentious politics program by Tilly, uh, Taro and McCarran, or McCarran, Taro and Tilly, I should say, um, uh, with much praise, with much criticism as well. That was my alarm. Uh, with much, much criticism as well. Uh, as far as I remember, also uh, by Mario himself, I think he was quite critical of this of this change. So, but anyway, uh, the question I would like to throw for the discussion and conclude uh, is: uh, Do we need such a change, or, or or can we just content ourselves to make some small adaptation to the current uh, uh, functioning of the world? Um, so, uh, and I will conclude on, on, on this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. I now give the floor to Marco De Seris uh, as a chair. And I just uh, uh, inform all uh, participants that they can uh, uh, ask for um, uh, the floor for intervention. 
Okay. Hi, everyone. Yes, I will just uh, be taking questions. If you can please uh, write them in the in the chat, and um, I will uh, read them for for everyone. Uh, you can also raise your hand by using uh, the Google uh, Hangout function of raising your hand. Uh, it's up to you. Come on, it's 50, <laughs> 53 of us. Everyone is shy. Or oh, as they as they as they would say, three inspiring talks. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, I just saw uh, a vignette saying uh, pre-COVID time offline teachers said always to say shut up. Now they always to say, please please say something. Don't let me alone. In, in the me as a as a as a as a break, okay, it's a kind of a commercial break. Oh yeah, there is a Manuela. Manuela. Yeah. Manuela well, okay. Thank you. Oh, of course. Uh, thank you for thank you for the book. <laughs> this is enough. And uh, and uh, my question is about the, the current times. So the the, the pandemic, current times uh, uh, in which we see many uh, waves of protest around. Uh, uh, intervening with the pandemic, uh, but uh, many times also meaning much more. So still uh, the topic of democracy from below are there, and uh, and many other important issues for social movement studies. So my my question is very, let me say, very <laughs> easy or trivial. Um, uh, this book uh, has been published before every all, all these, uh, so before the pandemic, and so. My question is, uh, um, what uh, what can be the contribution of this additional um, of, of of this book uh, uh, for interpreting these uh, these uh, current situation? Thank you. Who goes first? I think we we can maybe um, address also Marco's uh, uh, questions while uh, uh, people think about questions to ask. So please, the go. Mario. Oh, okay. Okay, we got we got it. We got it. The, the, the pandemic. I mean, the important thing is the book doesn't uh, tell us uh, how things operate nor does it tell us how things should operate nor does it tell us how things are going to operate to work in the in the future uh, the book identifies a few mechanisms basic me i would say maybe basic mechanism i would have to say not only of political life or social life in general which are relevant for the emergence which have, have proved to be relevant for the emergence of collective action. Now, the question, so I, say, I would say, to answer uh, Manuela's question, I would say, this tells us, uh, gives us parameters, and it, it helps us to identify talking about what the, um, the new uh, situation, the new challenges. And I, 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 I honestly think it's too early to, to say, to jump to conclusion about the, the, the impact of this, what, what, uh, of this situation. What we certainly, what we certainly can say, I think, is that this, uh, uh, the, the pandemic has affected everyday life in ways which are, were un unprecedented from World War II and probably more, of course, less uh, dramatic, less damaging, less in, in the areas of conflict, but uh, more pervasive. So uh, this should, so we should go, there, there have been a number of, of, of course, of, of restrictions to, to, to 
behavior. There is the curfew, frankly, a curfew, curfew, which is exactly. So the first thing is to to look at, to look at all the all the all the to identify that the book identifies all some basic mechanisms, for example, in terms of organizing and networking, and 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 that leads us to ask, raises the question, how do these mechanisms operate in, in changing in changing context? So it doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you what will happen. As, as the question is, are there different ways? It, it's clear that if you think, if you, if you take an, an abstract view of collective action, a standardized view in terms of massive, uh, massive uh, protest, uh, the massive demonstration or that we have come to associate with uh, industrial society, etc., this is clearly a very different situation. But the, the factors that the, 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 the relative weakness of this model is, is already there before the pandemic. So in that regard, I'm not sure how much the pandemic changes. I think I think the, the the book in that regard. I think the fundamental. I think by and large the fundamental problems that, that we identify are are there. We should have paid perhaps even more attention to the role of, of technology, but that which is that is spread across the different chapters. But certainly the the, the issue, the fundamental issue, are how how people get to come together, how how people manage to pull, pull resources, how means how people work out a definition of collectivity and it's clear all this is going to be affected by the by the pandemic but that's uh, i think a more the more empirical question uh i don't perhaps not as to add to this and then we engage with uh with marco what do you think yes no, it, yeah. i can say on the pandemic uh, i agree with mario uh, it's uh, um, open and it has to be seen I think that the third edition of the book can have uh, the more, uh, a more appropriate framework uh, uh, to address crisis. Uh, in uh, uh, these visions that I mentioned before, uh, processes uh, that develop uh, in intense time. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the pandemic now uh, is developing uh, uh, the same type of uh, opportunities and constraints as uh, uh, the uh, financial crisis uh, earlier on. I say especially now because in the very beginning there was uh, a tendency to consider the pandemic as a sort of natural catastrophe, even if uh, some uh, causes were singled out in environmental uh, pollution and uh, uh, in the visibility uh, of uh, the killing fields of inequalities, as Colin uh, uh, called it, uh, it's, uh, uh, it was initially considered as uh, we need to uh, uh, keep solidarity uh, in front of a natural event. Now I think it is uh, more and more instead uh, a situation in which there are at the same time uh, uh, grievances, um, Marco mentioned uh, it in the beginning, the fact that it has been a bit um, removed from our research, the fact that people move also in grievances and the pandemic has uh, strengthened some uh, cleavages, increased very much uh, others, made uh, precarities and so on, um, uh, even more conflictual. And on the other end, I think it has uh, open uh, uh, discursive opportunities, uh, um, things it's been said cannot be uh, uh, as they were before. It doesn't mean that things will not be as they were before, but that uh, there is space for uh, uh, conflicts. And I think conflicts uh, also that will reshuffle a bit uh, the way of thinking within uh, uh, different uh, uh, blocks, movements, and so on. On the one hand, the, the, there is a potential for convergence uh, of groups active uh, in different areas that we have seen already converging. Women's uh, against violence and women in the pandemic, and those who intervene on uh, migrant rights because migrant rights became uh, all the more uh, uh, contested and repressed in the pandemic. Um, social uh, issues, uh, different uh, type of uh, grievances uh, by different groups of uh, workers that 
sometimes are uh, uh, in competition with each other. So uh, I expect a lot of conflict. So I expect that uh, we have, uh, uh, we will have uh, a lot to study in the future, but also that they will be very different and that the outcome uh, is open. Research on war, uh, wars like uh, Charles Tilly's breaking work uh, uh, said from this type of crisis that, as Mario said, affect the, the uh, everyday life of all the people. Uh, you could have uh, a progressive type of developments. Uh, the welfare state came out of that. Uh, 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 female suffrage came out of uh, uh, wars. So there is the uh, idea that in a situation of uh, not only conflicts, but in which uh, big sacrifices are asked uh, for uh, to the citizens and uh, those in power tend to lose support, uh, there is more space for uh, uh, um, uh, broad conflicts. But of course, and also uh, agency and conquering rights and so on. But uh, uh, History of wars has also indicated that the development could be in the other directions. That uh, situations like this uh, can be situations in which there is a lot of scapegoating uh, of uh, uh, minority groups and a lot of uh, fractioning uh, and uh, divisions. Now to Marco Giugni. Which is the fundamental before the fundamental question let me i was uh, trying to, to make uh, we were talking about the standing of the field now i just got uh, a call passed to me the the current uh, the stanford uh, did the study of the, the top uh, two percent of world scientists and for Italian social scientists there are six people uh, silvia gerardi or Trentin b the Organization Studies, Gian Domenico Marione, Maurizio Ferreira, Giovanni Sartori, and uh, the two of us. So, which I think is an exaggeration, but anyway, I mean, so the, the, the field in that regard should be pretty quickly. So, so going back we, to, are the, we are the 1%, no, we are the 2%. Yeah, exactly, and uh, we should inform the members of uh, Italian Commissioni nazionali di valutazione that perhaps but if you let them know but anyway they wouldn't give a toss and uh, that, and that's precisely the problem that uh, uh, links to what uh, Mar uh, Marco was saying yeah the, the thing we are we're being Mark is right we've been extremely careful about uh, trying to, to to launch bridges uh, but uh, as you say it takes you to tango and uh, uh, the response has been less, and, and, and so uh, one wonders why. I mean, uh, first that there are, I would say that it's a mix. I mean, there are also always there was always a mix of selfish uh, tendencies to to, to to protect the niche, and there are also uh, problems, uh, more deeper uh, problems that uh, discourage uh, collaboration. And uh, I think there are there are, there are practical matters. Uh, very practical matter. The, the, the analyst of conventional uh, politics, whether electorate or participation, can rely on very, uh, by, by, by now, very consolidated data sets, which enable standard, which are uh, the, the usual big service, and we know that they have problems, but they, 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 they have problems, but they provide a solid basis, which, which can easily process, which, which establishes routines, which are routines, which are accepted, which facilitate access to journals, blah, blah, blah. So that's the kind of thing. Uh, our, our, our topic is by definition. We work very often on case studies. We work, uh, it's it difficult to, to, to develop, uh, to collect data which can be generalized. We are trying hard in different ways, but it is it's far, it's far much more, it's a kind of less, uh, uh, let's say, established, less mainstream uh, methodology for sure, and this doesn't facilitate. On, on the other hand, I see, frankly, it, 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 I speak of myself and I won't. But the thing is that we, we use to define ourselves a concept which is, uh, Increasing, we, we, we are never specified and multidimensional, and I, I insist uh, social movement can mean everything. 
so if, if we wanted to, to portray it ourselves, a social movement is absolutely and it is fine, but let's let's it's clear that we are not many of the process we are analyzed are not specific. We have we have done a lot of work with this mobilization theory, it's the most the clearest example. It's now it's now associated to social movement uh, because it has it happens that it has become popular and made popular by people who had an empirical interest in social movement. But with this mobilization theory it comes out from organization theory as an attempt to explain why in the presence of certain market opportunities, certain industrial sectors will develop. And it is it is it is a theoretic a model that theoretically applies to a new range of cases. It's not restricted by any means. So we have we have so it has become a theory of social movement because in empirical ways it has happened to be picked up by people who had an empirical interest in some phenomena that conventionally are associated with this, this word social movement. And that's a big, and, and this applies, if you think about that, you, you apply, you, the same is for framing, et, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, to put it short, I think, and, and we don't have, we don't have theories of very, we don't have theories of social movements proper. We, we don't, we, we have theories of, Collective action with theory of collective how our collective representation, shared representations, cultural representations emerge. We have theory of must be must protest or how protest emerges. Basically, and I'll put it so unless you uh, start thinking about the concept of social movement, as I've been trying for the last 25 years, we won't have theory of social movement. We will we, we'll be very difficult in, in travels to, 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 to sell our stuff because any kind of interest group person will tell you when, when you try to sell in Greenpeace or Amnesty International as a social movement organization, they will tell you, oh, well, this is an in public interest group. And that will be the end of the conversation. We, maybe we are not that, don't have an interest in engaging with these guys, but we, we, tell, we, we must realize not only because they are nasty or selfish, it's also because I think we present ourselves with the label with it, we haven't worked properly. Okay, I know I'm very big, extremely simplistic, but there was a question yes. from the audience, uh, I think, also, and uh, so the limit um, of this conversation. I have a question from uh, Mans, and uh, I read it for you, uh, for everyone. You have uh, talked a lot about the impact of outside events on the social movement literature, but what about the cumulative impact of prior research? I'm particularly curious about the accumulation of data that is now available to researchers, the protest surveys, large-scale protest event, political claims, data sets, and so on. How do you think this quantitative aggregation of data has contributed to the development of the literature? I can go ahead on this uh, and also address uh, uh, Marcos. Uh, important remarks. Uh, it's, tr it's true, we talked about bridges, but there are also walls, and uh, uh, one of the issues is uh, how uh, to overcome them, uh, if we are able and through which type of mechanisms. And um, uh, first of all, my impression is that uh, uh, there may be more uh, brokers uh, within the different fields than than we expect. So sometimes entering some new fields for me, uh, like the fields of migrations or the field of industrial relations, I realized that I thought that there was no connections. But then uh, looking more carefully, I noted that uh, within, for instance, industrial relations, there were people like John Kelly that have used our type of approach. So that's uh, uh, sometimes this type of uh, um, bridging are done uh, and we don't see it because we, we live uh, in uh, a very pillarized type of uh, academia. This also, I think, relates with the way in which I think the uh, uh, walls can be to a certain extent uh, uh, broken or overcome. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it will be uh, through the uh, open-mindedness uh, in approaching different topics. So, for instance, I've seen that in my own work, but also supervising pieces, uh, one is uh, pushed towards learning about uh, 
uh, other fields of studies because of uh, this, the very movements, for instance, then one address. So migration, student, youth, uh, labor, nationalist, uh, all type of movements that were not initially uh, addressed in social movement studies. And so when I studied them, also addressing man's questions, working upon existing research, what I tried to do was uh, to uh, read uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, literature. So doing the bridges and then seeing that, for instance, also in educational studies, there are bridges which are done. Or also in uh, uh, youth studies, there are bridges done in nationalism and so on. Uh, and the same, I think, is true when uh, uh, we approach issues uh, as uh, organizations, democracy, uh, elections, uh, which is our way of approaching movements. What I have also seen is that uh, um, geographical uh, uh, walls can be uh, broken or uh, overcome. Uh, this is true in Europe because also of uh, the large project that Marco uh, uh, is uh, coordinating, that we uh, have been coordinating uh, in the past and in the present, that have put in uh, interactions different uh, uh, traditions. But I think it is also uh, a, a mechanism has been also for me supervising PhD thesis or mentoring postdoc and learning, for instance, about the typical uh, language uh, in some area studies uh, that uh, has been also bridged by these very people, like incorporation uh, in the debate on Latin America that I learned through uh, Federico Rossi, or uh, other type of uh, uh, reflections on Eastern Europe that I uh, learned by students that were trying to combine. And uh, I think that uh, uh, I agree very much with uh, Marco. I think uh, that it's uh, uh, important transformation, that this type of dialogue is more important in uh, time of uh, globalization. And I think we have also to address this in terms of uh, the uh, uh, type of uh, uh, reactions to globalization. So if I think in terms of uh, the geographical bias, uh, I think we are in a moment in which, I'm sure that Mario agrees with me, uh, the American social sciences uh, are very much uh, self-reflecting and isolating from uh, the rest, uh, but we live in a situation in which it could be instead quite uh, uh, useful and quite natural to interact with scholars in the areas in which uh, uh, more movements uh, and more important and interesting movements uh, are happening. So addressing the final questions by Marco, uh, I'm, I'm not sure we can uh, have a paradigmatic uh, uh, shift, that we, we can sit together, uh, the three of us and uh, some others, uh, uh, and develop a new theories. But uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, as Mario was saying, we will uh, uh, develop a bit eclectically, uh, uh, bridging different type of uh, 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 approaches, uh, and so enrich uh, the um, social movements studies, but not through the development of uh, new theories, but rather recognizing that we need many and different theories in, uh, for, uh, in different perspectives. And in this, addressing man's questions uh, about uh, uh, constructing on the basis of existing and developing databases, uh, I think this is uh, happening. In this, we are a bit path dependent. For instance, uh, when we do protest event analysis or when uh, uh, we do surveys and demonstrations, we construct from what is there. Uh, but uh, I also think that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, important to continue uh, this uh, type of accumulation and uh, use uh, each uh, uh, the data that have been with a lot of uh, uh, investment commitments uh, uh, used. And 
Um, we have a, a second question in the chat posted by Hande. Uh, if you go, sorry, if you go by your first name, otherwise Donnets, if you go from uh, by your second name, I would like to ask you about current condition of social movements regarding individual and collective action with the development of social media and the current limitation of the pandemic on uh, the collective street action, can it be said that individual engagement through looser structured collective identities have been gaining more importance for expressing common political concerns or values like lifestyle movements, green living, and political consumption? If I can say something for a second about the social media part, uh, I would just recommend a book that we have been reading in uh, my seminar on digital politics, The Logic of Connective Action, that was published in 2013 by Bennett and Sagerberg, which opened up a debate. Uh, we obviously, the, the, the book can be also criticized, but uh, it's interesting because it allows us to think through um, what it means to be in, in an age where social media play a, an increasingly important role in uh, uh, collective action and mobilizations. I'm not going to go into the details of the book now, of course. Can I, can I say something about both questions yes. very quickly? Um, I don't have much to add, but for the three previous question, I agree with the answers that have been given. Uh, I would add that, uh, at least in my view, what would be uh, even more desirable is not only that uh, we uh, take advantage from the accumulation or the aggregation, as you said, of different data sets that we can learn and develop theories and knowledge uh, from that, but also that we try uh, or we start um, to connect different types of data. I think this is something that I've always, well, not always, but recently uh, as, 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 uh, as struck me uh, as, uh, well, you have the whole field of uh, protest event analysis, and then you have the whole field uh, uh, using surveys, including protest surveys, but how to connect these two kinds of, of data, I think this is something that could uh, give an added value uh, uh, relating to existing data and how we can use them to improve knowledge on social movements and, and collective action. And on the second question, I will leave probably my uh, uh, more prominent uh, colleagues to answer, especially Mario on collective identities perhaps. Uh, but this is a question that journalists ask me quite often actually recently uh, about this uh, uh, online uh, and, and social uh, social media and the role of social media. And my answer is always um, uh, positive on one side in the sense that uh, to the, the question that you ask uh, is, is, is if they're, they're being gaining more importance, uh, I, I would say yes, of course, this helps uh, organizing in some way, but then it's a matter of the sustainability of such mobilization and such organization, I think. And that, that's my point, but uh, I admit it's perhaps a bit conservative, or at least I've been told by those journalists that I'm a bit conservative on that, uh, that I think still the, 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 the uh, how do you say, the, the offline uh, kind of organizing and, and, and networking and, and, and creating organization is still crucial, actually, and not necessarily to uh, raise the mobilization, but 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 for sure to keep mobilization alive. Uh, in other words, we need uh, those abeyance structures that uh, some have uh, mentioned uh, years ago. Um, and, and those abeyance structures, have, I think, can be done only by by offline uh, networks and, and connections. But 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 that's my personal take. Maybe maybe not telling Mario has a different view. I just wanted to, uh, to uh, I concur very much with, uh, with Marco. I think that uh, what we see is a sort of a bridging here as well of different uh, um, uh, ways of uh, different repertoires of uh, actions. 
I see also many people in the streets. So more and more, uh, even under lockdown, I think that, that the old repertoires of actions, what Chastili used to call the modern repertoire of actions, is uh, still uh, very used. What I think is uh, uh, true and interesting is about uh, uh, is the part uh, about lifestyle movements, uh, uh, green living and political uh, consumptions that, for instance, a colleague uh, of Mario Francesca Forno is uh, uh, studying, uh, uh, focusing upon uh, also uh, uh, looking at recent movements. And uh, uh, it is uh, an important area, it's probably also an expanding uh, area, and it is part of the uh, response uh, of movements uh, uh, during the pandemics, uh, which, however, started also to be reflected upon uh, a lot uh, with the environmental movements, with uh, uh, the Fridays for Future, and so on. Mario. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, the issue, I think, think there are the, the, the issue of uh, new forms of, of uh, communication, the, the issue of connective action, goes along with uh, the issue of individualization. And I think that uh, actually sets, a, a, I can say, a delusional pattern in my view. I mean, uh, Bennett and Segerberg have made a very intelligent uh, argument, in fairness to them, they are, they are also very clear in pointing out the fact that uh, this internet-mediated form is aside the other form. It doesn't eliminate the other forms. But then, in, in, in assessing the, the impact of these other forms, the real question, this brings us exactly to the question of what are the phenomena that we are studying. As I said, social movement is used, depending with different emphasis, from large-scale attempt to, to challenge a, a distribution, fundamental distribution of power, Chuck Tilly style, the national social movement, the big child, to down to local campaigns. Now, it seems to me first, internet works very nicely to organize campaigns, to uh, single, single, single action initiatives, uh, to, to organize campaigns. The question is, what secures continuity over time? Now, the fact that we see the same, and, and this is one a big problem, we, we, we can be content with saying, OK, yeah, the other, okay we are in a post-industrial situation, the great narratives uh, have gone, the great narratives were bad and nasty and racist and Eurocentric and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, they had a very, they were they were they had a function. They brought together people who died with diverse interests. It's not that the working class was homogeneous. It's not that the national movement were homogeneous. They were brought together somehow, and they were also linked into in organizational terms. Now, what 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 happened? It seems to me that in a lot of episodes of collective action that we have witnessed nowadays are basically witnessed by yes by individuals which are who are honest, I doubt, no doubt, committed, but I also have a range of options in life, which is such that uh, that uh, enables them to, to, to play in different ways. It doesn't, doesn't force them to commit to one type of organization rather than the other. They can choose. And Merucci was very good at theorizing about that in, 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 in a positive way as, as a reflection of freedom. Yes, but to the point that uh, uh, this works very nicely for people who have options, for people who play, can play different roles. It doesn't speak to the needs of the uh, pe people who have less uh, option individually, and this brings us to the to the fact that uh, to, to the success that uh, uh, more traditional organizations have have, have, uh, have, uh, have played and uh, right wing movements. I'm not talking about Trump. Uh, Trump is America, and America has always been the, the major party. Have always had a very weak structure, but I think thinking of you. We have seen we have a remarkable success of uh, parties on the stream right who don't have a particular uh, reject do not reject a formal organization the way the social movement of the progressive front have recently. We have seen we have seen situations like 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 uh, like uh, Egypt in which uh, uh, of course the role of the net or social movement Castell is one of the most uh, misguiding uh, books uh, I've read in the last decades uh, has made. Uh, and then just to see that the big players in the process of being blah, blah, the army, 
which as far as I understand is still pretty much bureaucratic organization, and the Muslim Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood, who did exactly groundwork, political work on the communities, speaking to people, etc. So the situation, I mean, the, my question is fundamentally, yes, it works fine for, for certain uh, internet, for certain, it, it brings together communities of, of uh, like, like-minded like people, and it is it, effective in many different ways. The question is, what uh, keeps these different communities together in, in a partially coherent way? Um, maybe we can do without it. Um, time will tell. At the moment, uh, we, I think we, we are witnessing a dramatic lack of those structures. And, uh, and just simply, that we, because there are many people acting in many different forms, that we are facing a situation uh, potentially at least as effective as in the past, I think, is delusional. That, but well, again, I was, I'm very, very optimistic, but that's the way this discussion is open. Just, just wanted to mention that uh, the, the debate is extremely interesting, that we have to yeah. finish at, two uh, at one o'clock, so that we can move so to the we have restricted one session. question from uh, uh, Lorenzo, I believe, who raised his hand. I'm not sure whether um, Manuel has a second question. I think, Manuela, your hand is still up. Uh, if you uh, need to ask a question, you can go after Lorenzo. Okay, thanks Marco and uh, thanks uh, Donatella, Mario and uh, also Marco for this uh, uh, great session of the Cosmos talk. I need to say that uh, uh, I read uh, the first version of uh, the book uh, a bit late in uh, 2001 when uh, a friend of uh, uh, the three of you and uh, of uh, myself in Belfast, Maglio Cinalli suggested that if you are interested in social movement, then you have to read uh, uh, this book. And uh, I was like uh, uh, amazed by like uh, this uh, suggestion from uh, Maglio, who then became like my real supervisor on uh, social movement studies in those uh, uh, years in Belfast. So. Uh, I would strongly like suggest that I have to admit that uh, I've not read uh, the new editions uh, also because uh, I am uh, uh, very attached uh, to that version also like to the movements uh, and to the like uh, debates that you were discussing uh, in that uh, edition uh, so uh, this also like speaks uh, you know some of uh, to some of the um, the base that Marco was uh, mentioning that actually like uh, in a way like they spoiled uh, the, the the course that I will give in the second term uh, he was already like mentioning uh, um, most of uh, uh, the debates that uh, I will uh, discuss uh, with the students in the second term but uh, there is one debate that uh, maybe has not emerged on which uh, I would like to uh, ask you and is uh, uh, the debate regarding agency and structure. And uh, I mean, there is no like, uh, uh, I, I just mentioned in order like to uh, uh, frame uh, where is going like my question. The social movement field uh, uh, at its beginning was certainly like a social movement that was uh, 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 a field that was a, uh, uh, um, recognizing a, a certain level of structure and for this uh, structural uh, uh, dimension um, or level of analysis was like uh, was also criticized from within so agency was like uh, uh, coming back coming back by the end of uh, the 90s and beginning of uh, the new millennium and uh, i would say that also like uh, nowadays uh, uh, fields outside the social movement field uh, are uh, using uh, social movement uh, uh, approaches or theories because they uh, see the relevance of uh, the, agen the agential dimension that uh, social movement theories provide. But I wonder, like, uh, where do you think this debate is, is moving in the, in the present and in the future? within the social movement field, the, the debate within like uh, uh, scholars who are like prioritizing uh, uh, structural interpretation or agential uh, interpretation of uh, 
social movements, but uh, slash, I will say that, uh, you know, like the, the point of uh, Mario that, uh, I mean, he stressed uh, uh, today here on collective action, but uh, I would say that he's present, uh, you know, from the beginning of his work already in the 90s, this uh, uh, relevance of uh, collective action and this suggestion to go in uh, uh, such field with uh, uh, our approaches is uh, very much like, uh, uh, I would agree like with him that is the way forward. But uh, again, like, even if we look at collective action, how, uh, how are we going to deal with the debate on structure and agency? Thanks. I think this is the topic for um, a, a seminar that, in fact, Lorenzo is organizing. So I'm not going to give a long answer, but so we will continue to discuss it. My impression is uh, that no one uh, has uh, the uh, right interpretations, and so um, I have personally no problem with uh, both type of approaching continuing to develop uh, and also to the fact that they will be bridged in different ways because I think that uh, in many cases you cannot really, uh, it's not easy to assess is this uh, agential, uh, uh, is this structural, uh, does this scholar deny that structure has uh, an impact uh, or uh, uh, does this others deny that uh, agency has an impact? In most of the cases, uh, not. In most of the cases, then you go back to Giddens who connects uh, macro and micro. Uh, well, uh, I think the debate will continue, it is important uh, and so on, but uh, I, I don't think it will be disruptive uh, because I think that um, most of uh, the uh, social uh, movement scholars tend to be a bit uh, uh, in between considering both. Maybe the theoretical challenge is <laughs> for our field of studies, like for, for all, uh, which, uh, how to bridge the two. Well, you know, I mean, the issue of uh, agency and structure and uh, individual uh, aspirations and collective aspirations, etc. I mean, it's, it's uh, the story of social science and sociology has been <laughs> has been going on uh, on, on these debates for decades and we, we will not be solved. What I, I think, however, we should be, first we should, let me say, we should study more, pay more attention, I speak for myself first, is that we should pay more attention to general uh, social theory, rather than, and, and then sometimes uh, be careful not to get lost too much in the details of our story very often. It, 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 it's a stereotype, but very often people in our field study the, the movement they are interested in, emotionally attached to. It's not always the case, but it's often the case. And I think that uh, it, it's okay if we, this gives us the motivation to come into a field that it be beyond a certain level become, we should really be careful about what to, uh, the, the balance of time we devote, our effort we devote to different un undertakings. As such, however, the issue is not, uh, I don't think the, the I think the, the, the problem will bring him back. I mean, we need to, we need to take into, it's a, it's a classic cognitive process, the, 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 what, the, 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 what, is, what is in the front of the picture, what is in the backstage, and we, we, can, we cannot end, you know, any kind of group theory, you need, need the starting point, a hook around which a coherent sort of a coherent argument is developed. And this brings us inevitably to overlook some 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 uh, elements, some factors, some variables. And there is a dynamic which internal to the dynamic, which is purely internal, which is at the same time, sorry, internal to the professional logic of the scientific group and to the genuine aspiration to, to improving knowledge. That brings us to differentiate our arguments from the past. So we will we will see a uh, I'm maybe I'm an old cynical bastard, but I mean there is a every now and again there is always something coming back, whether it is culture, whether it is the state, and whether it is emotions or whether it is what you name, and there will be um, 
networks at one point in the future they will be back as well now they are here but they will disappear and they will come back so we i mean the, the difficult i think there is a difficult interesting difficulty in, in the way we operate and we must not be too much worried about that but we need to pay more attention to the social theory i think all right uh it's one o'clock so uh i think we are um we are done with this session that was uh, very interesting and uh there was so much more to say i would have liked to ask one extra question but there's no time and uh so thank you everyone for participating thank you Donatella, mario and marco and uh, everybody else thank you